Well, it's Thursday in wood shop. Need to get out here and get some frames built, get some things done. I have an extra project to do today. I need to get those two new batteries installed in my truck. Just come to see Brett and the crew at Battery Man. Got a couple of brand new batteries for my one ton diesel truck. Good people, nice to deal with, good prices, good products. We've got a nice powerful battery for an excellent price. And good warranty too, I'll tell you that. And very, very friendly service. And I don't think there is anything they can't replace the battery in here. They even have a shop here that will replace it right on the site. My batteries are completely dead, so I couldn't even get the truck here. I have to do it on my own in the cold. But anyway, that's uh, Brett and the crew at Battery Man. Thanks a lot. I need to get the truck started, which won't be a problem after the new batteries are in. The truck is plugged in and everything. I have to move the truck away from the garage and then load those two pallets of equipment that I've built because tomorrow I take a trip to the wax dipper drop them off there. I will likely pick up a truckload of boxes for the return trip then I will be going a second time to retrieve the dipping that will be completed by then. They don't take very long to finish dipping as a matter of fact that much dipping I could wait for that. It might take me a couple hours to wait for that and I often do. I'll take a few pieces they slip me right in when I'm there and uh, they just dip while I'm while I wait so I don't need to make another trip uh, to retrieve it I'm planning to go again anyway that's that's my plan and so that's uh, that's not a problem I'll leave it with them and they can dip it at their leisure and then probably in another couple weeks could be a month I'll go again and retrieve my dipping at that point I usually take a trailer when I go uh, because I have far more stuff than I'll fit in the truck but this time I think everything will go in the truck so I'll just do it that way so we'll build a few frames today the temperature outside is still kind of cold uh, we're looking about I don't know minus 18 or something but the temperature is rising dramatically today we're going to get up near zero Minus four, I think, is the forecast daytime high today. Uh, so I'm going to wait a little while to put those batteries in. Just, you know, because working out there, you have to have your gloves off uh, to put the nuts and bolts together. And, and I'm just going to wait for a little bit warmer temperature. Uh, hopefully I don't regret that decision because I think it's going to get windy too, which really negates all of your rise in temperature. So we'll see what happens. We'll build some frames and then we'll go out there and do these batteries in a little bit. So I don't know if you need to see all about me building frames today. You've seen that way too much already. Thanks for all, uh, all the views and thanks for the comments. I appreciate that. At any rate, have fun. I'm trying a bit of a new camera angle today. I'm having difficulty with uh, getting the camera far enough from the work and yet close enough to the work. There's only so many options in my shop is where I can put a tripod. So this is Thursday. I haven't built frames since Tuesday. When I was done, I didn't bother dumping my glue back in the in the gallon jug. I have my little pot of water here to clean my brush and to wet my cloth. I just set that pot of water on top of my glue pot and that glue is as good as new today. So that works really well.
nice, but I'm going to put a product on here. This is called Zep 45. And I'll tell you, if you're looking for a loosenol, highly recommend Zep 45. If you're gonna say I like WD-40, with all due respect, you have no idea what a loose ball even is. WD-40 is crap compared to anything that's actually a loose and all. So you would be well well served to find. WD-40. If you're using WD-40, you might as well use water because it works just as well. It's cold out here. I need to get this done. I need to get these new batteries in. I say it's a bit of a lift in there. Nice they got the plastic caps to uh, protect everything until you're ready, ready to hook things up. Putting a, putting batteries in a, a two battery system has the battery cables to one side you have to realize that the battery cable on the other side is now live and it may be sitting there floating in a rather unsafe situation perhaps so here's my connectors my plastic caps are still on. Boy, that gets cold on the fingers fast. Of course, this is a little bit of a goofy setup, so I've got two different sized bolts to deal with here. Oh, yeah. socket from a 10 to an 11 millimeter. Sure wish they would decide that they're going to build it all out of one standard instead of two. They've got some fasteners in here that are SAE and they've got some fasteners in here that are metric. My personal preference is metric. They're far easier to uh, you know, anybody can count from 1 to 10. Well, I guess if you can't count from 1 to 10, you shouldn't be working on your own vehicle anyway. Three-eighths and seven-sixteenths and five-sixteenths and thirteen-sixteenths and five-eighths. That's kind of nonsense. I get it. I work in the, in the wood shop. I work in SAE. out of the way. Okay. I'm gonna blow my finger so I can feel my fingertips again.
kind of a weird little clamp at the bottom. It works well, but it's a weird thing to put in there. never happens in July when it's warm doesn't look like to me it's in there straight but it's only because it isn't the truck is tall I can't these cables are not touching anything metal especially this positive one over here I don't have anybody else here back to what's done so put this negative post on here on the post I should say you know what I mean Let's push it down there nice and tight hard to know how you're pushing on it when you can't feel your fingers Just hated. Okay. And the other one. Push it down there nice and tight. Tighten that. So I had the block heater plugged in since yesterday. Hopefully uh, that's been doing its job. battery tender here as well honestly it just floats here 
problem. I don't think it can get out of there once the hood's closed. Just to warm my hands for a second. I've owned this truck for a number of years now, eight years. I've never heard that engine turn over that fast. That was amazing. I didn't expect brand new batteries to have full charge. Maybe they don't, but if, even if they don't, boy, it sure turned over fast. Okay, I'm gonna let that warm up and go in and warm my hands. before that uh, this is actually my favorite truck. It's not as, quite as new and modern, it's new and modern enough. It's got more than enough power, it's got way too much power because you gotta sacrifice some fuel economy for the amount of power that it has. It's got this little 360 cubic inch 5.9 Cummins diesel. It's, uh, it's a real little workhorse. Six speed German transmission. It's got a nice, uh, nice feature when it's cold. It uh, idles up by itself until it warms up. So I'm just going to move it here a little bit so I can load my pallets in the back to go to the dipper tomorrow. As soon as you move just a little that idle will come right down. See? It's down about 800 now. I don't even have it four wheel drive. It's been sitting in this snowbank for quite some time. Run in a while, so just gonna let it loosen up a bit. This thing that you're seeing in the back up here, I'll show you. It's called a tuner, it's a bully dog tuner. I don't actually have it installed right now, it's just monitoring some of the engine output numbers. And oddly enough, the one thing I use most is the speed. This is kind of the speedometer I use. And why, you may ask, that is because this is a US market truck. I brought this truck in from 
Phoenix actually. So the kilometer marks on the speedometer are very small, especially at night they're backlit and they're really hard to see. So I find uh, this thing is better to use. Yeah, I really like this truck. Looks like maybe I should catch some fuel tomorrow, eh? I'm gonna need a bit. It's a six hour round trip, so we're gonna have to fuel her up. Okay, let's go load that freight. Well, there's the freight loaded up. I don't even know if you can see up there. 248 inch skids is nice to get in the back of your pickup truck. The beauty of an eight foot bed. Big guy sounds happy. So we're gonna go and let him sleep for the night and get out of Dodge tomorrow in the Dodge. I feel kind of silly. I had videoed the whole process of loading that freight, but I didn't press record on the camera. It's uh, impossible to see the display outdoors, right? So I'm like, I feel really bad about that because uh, I threaded the needle with that tractor perfectly. <laughs> Everything went absolutely perfectly, uh, which never happens if anyone's watching or you're making a video of what you're doing. So I feel very cheated over that. <laughs> well, I got to pack it in. My wife's home. I'm right, going to have some supper. 125 frames today. Not that great. You know, I did more than just that, but not much more than just that. Thanks for watching, and have fun.